recursion. Mm. Um, so anyway, the software is called Arduino Scope. It's a, it's a processing script, or processing sketch as they call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's free, uh, and it also requires that you run another sketch under Arduino. And that's the one that I looked at and modified to work with my board. But that that's particular Arduino sketch is super tiny. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. It literally just prints out the six numbers and then has a character term. And if you only need one or two numbers, you can actually use the, um, there's actually a sketch that comes with processing, which is the Arduino call response, which does two channel ADC communication to an Arduino. What's that one called? Um, I think it's called Arduino Call Response. Mm -hmm. It's just a very simple demo of uh, two-channel communication. It reads out two channels of the ADC. So for really stupidly low precision, that can actually be OK. Can you get closer to the screen? see lots of you. <laughs> Three of you. More, more of me. There we go. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> <laughs> You and your scope. Can you zoom in on the scope here? This is really excellent. Hmm. I guess we're bringing it closer. Yeah, I'm afraid. Whoa. Cannon. Okay, good. It looks like it hasn't been ruined. I don't have a long enough cord to come over there, so we're going to have to just do it straight off the eyeball. I'm okay with that. Anybody else okay with that? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. That looks pretty cool. It's bright. <laughs> so, um, uh, this is a, uh, this demo program is running in XY mode on the scope, which is where we use the scope um, not just to plot um, a signal versus time, but to plot one signal versus another signal. So, um, if we put this back into the regular mode, um, so I've turned off um, AC mode, and let's just plug in a single channel right now. I just turned off the, the X1 mode. So I've got a signal here coming out of my microcontroller, and I'm now plotting it versus time. I've got uh, an X position control that controls where my signal shows up, and I've got a Y position that shows up, uh, here's where it shows up. This is a real uh, oscilloscope in the traditional sense that it's a cathode ray tube where the input signals are amplified and then used to feed some magnetic coils in here in real time that actually deflect the electron beam by your actual amplified signal to be on the screen. So this thing has no idea what's going on. It can't measure the signals like those newfangled ones can. It can't tell you what your frequency is. It can't tell you what the amplitude is. Um, and it can't store a signal. But uh, what it can do is um, be cheap and show you what your signal looks like. Um, so I'm in the automatic trigger mode right now. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's sort of two sets of spikes here. And they're sort of flaky. We sometimes see one, sometimes we see the other. So this is a case where it's triggering automatically and not very well. So I put it from the automatic trigger now into the normal trigger mode. Now I can change the trigger level by changing, turning this knob. I can dial it to we just see the single signal, which is what we're actually looking at. And intensity. And then I can look at this signal, which is a sort of a, oh, look at that. That's funny looking. Um, so here's what our signal looks like. We've got uh, a big flat area uh, with some spikes in it. And then we've got, um, let's see, get back in the calm mode here. Um, then we've got a higher area here. So this is in time. And the divisions here are one millisecond. So I'm looking at 10 milliseconds. So every 10 milliseconds, it goes through this whole sequence of dots here. Um, a whole bunch of back and forth, back and forth, up and down, and then that higher signal. Um, and then let's look at the Y signal that's coming into here. So the microcontroller is putting out a second signal as well, which looks like this. And a little smaller here. 
just the trigger. Okay. This one looks like this. Um, it's doing a sort of a slow ramp up, horizontal bit, and up, and then very fast back down for most of it. And then it's got a little while where it's up at some higher position. And when we graph these two things against each other by putting the scope into XY mode, um, you can start to see what shape that's drawing. So I plug into the two signals, and um, what do we see? Well, um, let's see if we can get it back on camera right here. There we go. Um, so the horizontal scans, we're doing this back and forth, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then we go up here and stay there at the little ball for a while, and that's what makes the signal. Um, so the oscilloscope, um, almost any oscilloscope can also display two signals at the same time in time mode, and there's a couple different ways to do it. One is to add the signals together, another is to um, uh, chop the signal so that you show both at the same time. Okay, so get them both on the screen. I'm going to lower the X position one, raise the, or sorry, lower the X position one, raise the two. And now you can start to see the two X and Y signals with respect to each other. And you can see that they're synchronized, of course, that we're drawing this play field going back and forth and drawing the ball. So do you draw the play field several times and then draw the ball? Yep. Okay. So we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. Just to make up the here. feel brighter? Yeah. So um, when we're hanging out at the ball, we're just holding in one position for a long time. But the play field's a big, long stretch of things that needs to be all lit up. So we have to have to trace over the whole thing back and forth a lot of times. You want the whole thing to stay lit up. And then back in XY mode here. And the X and Y scale knobs now control the position at the uh, scale. Um, and turn the intensity down so you don't see that stripe so much. And there we go. That's awesome. Did you write this little game? Um, I wrote this version of it, yeah. And so uh, you're telling me this is this is based on. So this is a recreation of incredibly unfaithful mechanics and electronics of the 1958 video game by um, Higginbotham. Higginbotham. I don't remember his first name, but he was a physicist at Brookhaven National Lab, and they wanted to do something to make the lab seem a little more exciting for Visitors' Day, so they. Uh, I wired up this are... circuit um, with some of their newfangled tube op amps and a whole bunch of relays, and they made a what was one of the world's first video games, and certainly the first video game that really you know was like what we call it now, where there's you know stuff moving around the screen. There were um, tic tac toe games predating this, but certainly this is uh, way before Pong. Do you know if they had little consoles as well? Like what kind of how did they do? They well, they were just like this little dongles with a knob and a button. They actually did. Wow. Yeah. Is that guy still alive? Um, not that I know of. Yeah. They were able to figure out acceleration just with op-amps? Well, acceleration is very easy on op-amps. Um, op-amps are natural um, computer circuits. Almost any, and you know, there was a time when they weren't sure if uh, you know, analog or digital computers were the way of the future. And uh, it's fairly straightforward to build. Um, op-amp circuits to multiply, divide, take exponentials, logarithms, add, subtract, and all that. And quickly. Real time, absolutely. That's really cool. I think if that guy was still alive, I think he'd like to see the thing. <laughs> this is, in so many ways, the wuss adaptation, because I didn't build it with all the op-amps and relays. <laughs> and, you know, some people have done that. No, instead you used a $2 microcontroller. 
I used a Jeweler microcontroller and 20 cents worth of resistors. And then um, three dollars worth of very fancy aluminum knobs from Jameco. Right, more on the knobs than than the <laughs> yes. But I do like that it's very economical on its resources. There's not any extra chips you need to do. It's just the raw output ports of the microcontroller. Oh, do you have to filter the output? No. So I initially tried to build this with just the two PWM outputs with a filter afterwards, but it wasn't actually fast enough to give the right kind of display on the scope. Um, so I ended up rebuilding it that there's eight outputs like on port D, eight on port B, I guess. Um, and each goes to an R2R. Oh, um, an R2R motor. Okay. Um, essentially a, a primitive digital analog converter. Primitive but highly effective. 